Well, comes a weekend, comes Michael Snyder out there on the uh, other coast of the United States, the West Coast, and he's in Hollywood, and he tells us all about what's happening with the latest films. Hello, Michael. Hi, Alex, and uh, boy, oh boy, the uh, genre festival this weekend, the uh, horror, uh, the heist movies, science fiction, all stuff I love, but uh, whether the movies themselves are any good or not, uh, that's why I'm here to, uh, to speak unto them. Okay, let's start with Ocean's 8. I wish I enjoyed Ocean's 8, which is a woman-centric sequel to Steven Soderbergh's Ocean's 11 remake and the two films that followed in kind of a trilogy, Ocean's 12 and Ocean's 13, that featured George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon doing Frank, Sammy, and Dino as high-end thieves who target a Las Vegas casino for a big heist. I love heist movies, which is why I tolerated those follow-ups to uh, Ocean's 11. But Ocean's 8, for all of its star power, with Sandra Bullock playing Debbie Ocean, sister to Clooney's uh, Danny Ocean character, and Kate Blanchett as Debbie's partner in crime, Lou, doesn't have the wit, the tension, the panache, and the suspension of disbelief that would make it work. Um, Debbie is sprung from jail and wants revenge on an ex-boyfriend who ratted her out. Uh, she also wants a big score, a Cartier diamond necklace worth $150 million that's going to be around the neck of an arrogant media star played by Anne Hathaway, and she's going to be at the elegant annual Met Gala in New York City. So plot holes and, and aspects that strain credibility would be less of a problem if we were carried along by the story and the excitement of the caper, but it's theft by numbers with a familiar bunch of character types, the crafty one, the glib one, the loose cannon, the tech nerd, etc. Only they're played by fairly charismatic women, uh, including Helena Bonham Carter, Sarah Paulson, Mindy Kaling, and Rihanna. And they can only raise so high above the pedestrian material, so it's nowhere near as clever and witty as it thinks it is. Gary Hunger Games Ross directed and co-wrote. I have to believe that Soderbergh, who's listed here as a producer, would have done a better job, but that's just wishful thinking. Uh, Ocean's 8 has a few nice moments, but they're mere moments, and any scene stealing here is petty theft. Okay, Hereditary is another story. There's a little Rosemary's Baby, even some Carrie, The Exorcist, and The Wicker Man to Hereditary, which is a movie about what happens to a family in the aftermath of its matriarch's death when her daughter, who is brilliantly played by Toni Collette, begins to realize some truly freaky things about her ancestry that will impact her high school age teenage son and a frankly weird junior junior high age daughter and influences aside this is ultimately its own extremely effective occult horror movie and highly recommended creepy scary it works in a modern context like the recent low budget frightener it follows as it builds a sense of impending doom that gets worse and worse for what appears to be a cursed family by the way the dad who's befuddled by his wife's increasingly unhinged behavior is played by Gabriel Byrne and an area woman who tries to assist Colette's distraught character is played by the great Anne Dowd. Hereditor uh, Hereditary is um, frightening in unexpected ways. I mean, it's fresh and blessedly original in its depiction of uh, what one might call the dark arts. Creative, disturbing, downright unnerving, a movie with top-notch performances, high marks to Hereditary. Um, an atmospheric, sometimes violent look at a dark near future, Hotel Artemis has the benefit of a great ensemble, but fails to offer much in the way of character development, even as it takes a visually effective uh, but budget-conscious approach to depicting a riot-riddled downtown Los Angeles in the future. And it does so by focusing on the title business, Hotel Artemis, which is in fact not a hotel, but a members-only hospital catering to the high-end criminal element. The Artemis is overseen by the nurse, played by a surprisingly beaten down looking Jodie Foster and her security man, janitor and right hand guy, played by Dave Batista. We enter the joint when an opportunistic robber, played by Sterling K. Brown, who you know from This Is Us, uh, uh, brings his bullet -ridded, uh, riddled brother there after a bank job gone wrong. Appropriately murky art direction, sense of dread, pretty rock and fight scenes with Batista, and especially limber Euro dervish Sophia Butella, pounding, spinning, punching, kicking, slashing, and for chuckles you get Charlie Day as a low-end a-hole, 
and Mr. Hilarity himself, Jeff Goldblum, as the top dog mobster who needs medical attention, stat. Um, it's a B movie, but it looks good, and I enjoyed watching it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I would say that the writer director, Drew Pierce, does a pretty good job on this thing, considering. Okay, a better movie is a mix of true crime docudrama, docu-comedy, and actual footage of the participants as they are today. It's called American Animals. It's a smart, well-executed look at uh, an attempt by four well-off college kids in Lexington, Kentucky, to steal a stash of extremely rare books from a university library in 2004. The two lead kids are very well realized by up-and-coming actors, with the arty, aimless one played by Barry Keegan, uh, who was really unsettling in last year's Killing of a Sacred Deer, and the manipulative, careless one played by Evan Peters, who's Quicksilver in the uh, recent X-Men movies. In a small role, Anne Dowd is back uh, as the librarian, and she's as good here as she is in Hereditary. These guys plan the caper meticulously after watching a number of heist movies, but they soon learn that things Things don't always go in real life like they go in films. Written and directed in sure-handed fashion by a British filmmaker named Bart Layton, I think it's worth a look, particularly on the home screen when it's available. And finally, we I, we need to catch up to last week's release, Upgrade. It's the latest movie from Lee Wanell, the Aussie writer-director, who pretty much created the Saw and Insidious horror franchises and wrote the most significant of those movies. It's set in the near future when more and more sophisticated AI is being developed. Uh, it's about a man who receives a high-tech cure after he's paralyzed in a shooting that also results in his wife's death. But unlike the saw, uh, saw and Insidious, it's less standard horror, except for elements of what we would call body horror. The cure is an implant that will allow the guy to walk while uh, boosting his physical capabilities and could very well allow him to get revenge on those who killed his wife and crippled him. And it goes from there. Totally enjoyed upgrade. First rate B movie. Uh, what are you watching, buddy? Well, a uh, uh, show that I, I guess I haven't mentioned that I've been watching on a rather regular basis. And I think it's terrific called into the badlands, uh, which is on AMC and it's Dan it stars Daniel Wu and it is basically on television the kind of Hong Kong fighting uh, epic that you get uh, out of those old Hong Kong films with uh, Jackie Chan and so on with very well choreographed fight scenes and so on. And I heartily recommend Into the Badlands. It's in its third season now. Great, great. I'll have to take a look at that. I never really uh, tuned in, but that'll be it for uh, this week. Hopefully, we'll be back with more goodies next week. In the meantime, you can check me out on Twitter at Culture Blaster and on Facebook at Michael Snyder's Culture Blast page. Okay, thank you, Michael. And there's more GabNet coming right up. <laughs>